See, we get real fruit conscious in the church because Jesus says stuff like you know them by their fruits. So we go, <gasps> and we look at our tree all the time and we're wondering what people see when they look at our tree. And we're like these great fruit inspectors and we're always thinking, I don't have enough fruit. I should be doing better. And then we get striving to try to produce more and try to look cleaner and look better. And you can even put on a facade to just be a church folk, you know? And it's like not the way it is. It's not about the fruit. It's about the tree. If you make a tree good, the fruit's good. So it's all about your being and your state of being. It's all about who you are and knowing who you are. Because if you can make the tree good, you got guaranteed good fruit. See, Jesus says stuff like a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. And we hear those scriptures and go, and we think of something in our life and go, I ain't a good tree. And then we try to fix the fruit problem. What he's talking about is not knowing who you are. Make a tree good and his fruit will be good. So all of a sudden we start seeing the value of our life. Why Jesus really came. And that's what I'm about to explain. Because living by faith and receiving grace is a very simple thing. It's called a love relationship with the father. It's not trying to live the Christian life. You're in love. He came to love you, to embrace you, to live inside of you and manifest his great name through your life. Even he calls us the embodiment of Christ. We're the picture of Jesus. Corinthians says to God, we're the fragrance of his son. It says that through us, he'll diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge everywhere. You know a tree by the fruit? Good tree can't bear bad fruit, bad tree can't bear bad You know what we do? Because we think of ourselves, we hear fruit, and we introspect, and we get all condemned when we hear that preaching. He's not even talking about fruit, he's talking about tree. He's saying, if you know who you are, your fruit will follow. If you don't know who you are, your fruit will follow. So make a tree good, know who you are, so the fruit can be. We hear judgment. You know a tree buys fruit, and we introspect, and we go... <laughs> We hear a good tree can't bear bad fruit, and we go, oh my God, I have to be a bad tree. (laughs) Because we go through our minds the bad fruit we've produced. And we go, if a good tree can't bear bad fruit, and I've bore bad fruit, then I'm a bad tree. And you're like that little Willy Wonka thing, you know, the bad egg thing. Did you ever see that? (laughs) Did you ever see that? Bad egg. You're bad egg. (laughs) That's not what he's saying. He's saying, if you make a tree good, fruit will be good. What's he saying? If you teach people who they are, their life will show it. And all of a sudden, I'm in the freedom of grace. I'm not working and laboring to produce good fruit. Are you kidding me? You say, well, how can you walk in righteousness? Because I'm a righteous tree, the planting of the Lord. I've been made righteous in His sight. So righteousness is what I do. It's who I am. Righteous. Right? Yes. Isn't that awesome? I'm not trying to be righteous. I've been made righteous. I'm not trying to earn it. I'm not trying to prove it. I'm enjoying it. I'm accepting it. I can show you in Colossians 1 where you're holy, blameless, and above reproach in the sight of God through the death of Jesus Christ. And that you'll remain that way if indeed you continue in the faith and don't let anything change your mind. So if you stay there, guess what your fruit will start looking like? Holy, blameless, and above reproach. (laughs) And then guess what? You'll have this big unveiled face and you'll feel like you're one with him and you'll have intimacy with him and you won't be ashamed. And you won't take 20 minutes to get over yourself to pray to him. He said, be holy for I am holy. You know how you're holy? Believing he made you righteous. Believing he washed you pure and made you clean. Because if you think clean, you'll live clean. If you think, son, you'll bear the fruit of son. If you make a tree good, the fruit's good. We're busy trying to change the fruit to prove the tree. Why don't you just let the tree be? Why don't you just say what you did is enough? If you don't start where he finished, you'll never run well. He accepted you in the beloved. You're not living to be acceptable. He accepted you. And because you're accepted, you'll live acceptable. Who who has felt like they are under... The definition that I need to bear good fruit because you know me by my fruit, so I need to bear good fruit. Be honest with me. Raise your hands real high. I want to see how many of you. Okay? Now watch. That comes out in our teaching a lot because we'll quote Scripture. And we think, oh, you'll know them by their fruit, buddy. And we're like, oh my gosh. (laughs) 
But guess what? If your fruit's not in alignment with truth, guess what it means? You don't know what kind of tree you are. You just don't know the, the tree you are. See, it's not about the fruit. It's about the tree. Because if you make a tree good, this is the words of Jesus in the Gospels. If you make a tree good, what's that mean? Well, if you study that out through the cross, it means if you make a tree righteous. If you tell a tree you're righteous, you're amazing, you're the will of God, you were planted by God, and you were destined to live and destined to reign and destined to bear fruit, my life's on purpose. My life's calculated by God. I'm the will of God. All of a sudden, this tree's made good. It's a tree of righteousness, the planning of the Lord that He might be glorified. We're not trying to go out and bear good fruit. We're becoming good trees. And good trees bear good fruit. Come on, this thing is so simple. This isn't rocket science. We are so heady sometimes, it's become a downfall. Why? See, I'm not a deep guy. You're going to learn that over this school, okay? <laughs> I'm probably more borderline flaky than deep. I, I'm just a flighty, whatever. Watch this. Does an apple tree bear apples? To say, see, I'm an apple tree. Or does an apple tree bear apples because it's already an apple tree? We try to bear righteous fruit to say, see, I really am righteous because we don't believe we are. So we're striving to do good things because we're not affirmed that we've been made right. And we're not affirmed that there is something good inside of us called a changed heart because the fact that you care means you've changed. The fact that you even want to bear good fruit means that that's a good day for your heart. Make a tree and it's fruit automatic. He's, he says, a good tree can't bear bad fruit. And we go, <gasps> he says, a good tree can't bear bad fruit. And we go, <gasps> and we inspect our life and go, oh my God, that is a sour apple. That is a rotten apple. That is a moldy apple. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we hear what he said, a good tree can't bear bad fruit. And we go, we assess our lives and go, oh my God, I got bad fruit. I'm not a good tree. He's not even talking about fruit. He's talking about the tree. We hear fruit. We're trained to hear fruit. He's talking about the tree. A good tree can't bear bad fruit. The fact that you care if a fruit's not good in your life means you're a good tree. Because a bad tree can't bear good fruit. The fact that you even care to look at your tree and go, oh, means you're a good tree. But the lie is, you're thinking fruit. He's talking about the tree. Come on, you've been to English class. The topic of the sentence is tree, not fruit. Come on. Come on. Woo. Yeah. You hear fruit and try harder. And then you're sure you're not a good tree, so the tree's never made good, so the fruit can't change. And the more you think there, the more you're aware you're failing, and the more you're a loser, and the more veiled you are. Now you want to draw near to him, but you can't draw near to him, and now you're Adam and Eve, and the fig leaves. Ah! Make a tree good and it's fruit will be good. What's he talking about? Talk about tree. He didn't say, he didn't say, a good tree can't bear bad fruit. And a bad tree can't bear good fruit. A good tree. It's the topic of the sentence. It's the noun. A good tree. We're talking about a tree. And a bad tree. Therefore, you know a tree. <laughs> so simple, it's amazing, isn't it? Because we care, we hear what he's saying, hear fruit, we try harder set ourselves up to fail, and then we become a bad tree in our mind. Well, it's called works. It's called religion. It's calling doing to be instead of being to do. Yeah. 
it got in you at an early age. If you grew up in the 50s, some guys, some crooners and stuff, they said, doobie, 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 doobie. It's not doobie, it's be do. They had it all wrong. It's be doobie, 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 be do. <laughs> I'm just telling you, man, this stuff gets ingrained in you. Doobie, doobie, do. <laughs> Do to be? No, be to do. One's religion, it's man's works, an attempt to get a hold of God. The other one's God getting a hold of man and changing man. Jesus says a good tree can't bear bad fruit. Bad tree can't bear. So therefore we know a tree by it. We hear fruit. He's talking about the tree. He's not even talking about the fruit. Listen, he didn't say a good tree can't bear bad fruit. A bad tree can't bear good fruit. Therefore, you know a tree by its fruit. No, he said a good tree. Come on, you English majors. What's the topic of the sentence, fruit or tree? Here's what happens, because we do have sincerity deep in us, because the gospel's touched us at a level where we really care and want to do justice to the blood of Jesus. Fair? All of a sudden we hear that and we go, oh, I want to do better. I want to bear better fruit. I want to try harder. And then you feel like you're failing and doing your heart injustice, then your heart gets questioned, and then you demean yourself and weigh yourself short and the tree's never good. And if the tree's never good, how can the fruit be good? So then we sell ourselves off as sinners, because that's the easiest cop-out. Hey, that's the way we are, brother. Sin waiting to happen, man. This is so unscriptural, it's scary. You're called to live by the Spirit. You're called to reckon yourself dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God in Christ Jesus. It said if the first sacrifices weren't sufficient in making the wor worshipers perfect, they would have had no, if it was sufficient, they'd have had no more consciousness of sin, Hebrews 10. But he took away the first to establish the second, and he's perfected once forever. Those who come to him. So the second one, covenant, is to have no consciousness of sin. You say, well, what are you saying? You're perfect? You've missed the whole point. I'm not even thinking sin, guys. I'm thinking sonship. And you'd be amazed how much you can live like a son when you think a son. Because if you make the tree good, the fruit's automatic. Amen. Don't you let anybody sneak in and teach you works and religion and legalism that'll wear out your flesh and wear down your soul and eventually take a toll on your good, God-fearing heart. Amen. You wake up every day and thank God you're a good tree. When nobody's looking, you lift your hands. And when nobody's looking, not to put on a show between you and Jesus. Father, you love me and my life is full of purpose. You have washed me completely clean through the blood of Jesus. I'm not waiting to get the wrinkles out. You took them out. I'm not waiting to get spotless. You wiped them away. The blood has washed me and made me white as snow. You look upon me and rejoice and smile at the work righteousness has done. And I look to you and say, I thank you, I'm a son. That's called communion and prayer. Father, I thank you that I'm a good tree, the planning of the Lord, a righteous tree that you might be glorified. Today there's fruit hanging all over me because I know who I am. And God, people are going to eat of me and be satisfied because of the Spirit of God that lives inside of me. Now, come on, I'm talking to people here. I'm telling you, you you'll think you can't approach Him. And when you do, it's usually through the, the means of how bad you've been. Rarely, I've found that rarely do people, when they're all alone, just say, Father, I thank you, you love me. God, it's, it's obvious to me that you love me and see my value, and you're raising the worth of my life just simply through the cross of Jesus Christ, because Jesus, you'd have never died if my life wasn't worth living, and if you didn't want to live inside of me. So no matter what I don't understand and what I feel like I failed, I'm telling you with nobody looking, I give myself to you. Father me, raise me up, teach me, give me understanding. And as I open up this book, let it come alive inside of me. I'm telling you, rarely do Christians just, just chill with God and chat with God and 
Man, I thank you. You see me apart from sin, and you see me as if I've never eaten that silly tree. I thank you that you see me as righteous in your sight, and you have redeemed me through the blood of Jesus Christ. See, that's making a tree good. You say, how do I make a tree good? It's not by cleaning up your act. It's by believing your value through the cross. If you're going to live like a son, you've got to believe you're one. If you're going to bear the fruits of righteousness, you better be a righteous tree. You better believe he sees you as righteous through the blood. You say, yeah, but Dan, I'm messing up. I understand. And as soon as you do, you realize it. You ought to thank God for the light in your life, for the way he's got your attention. Instead of running from him and repeating it and hiding it and getting into secret, you ought to run right to Papa and say, God, this is so not who I am. There's a greater destiny in me than this thing. And I'm done with this. I'm beyond this. Father, thank you for... There's a place for you to get violent and go after this thing and seize it. Why? Because the blood of Jesus says you're so much more than that repetitive thing. The blood of Jesus says your life is worth it. This thing isn't about do right and don't do wrong and go to heaven and don't go to hell. It's about fulfilling your created value and manifesting the reason you're alive. It's not about surviving. It's not about making it. It's not about praying all these prayers of faith for a better day. It's about knowing him and being more like him because you see what you've never seen before. You make a tree good. You don't try harder. You make a tree good. And the fruit's guaranteed good. What's that mean? See who you've become through the finished work of Jesus. Understand the gospel. Proverbs says in all you're getting. In all you're getting. It doesn't say in all you're getting get blessing. It says in all you're getting get understanding. Understanding will transform your life. It's the greatest thing to understand. To see what you haven't seen before. You can't be what you can't see. In all you're getting get understanding. If you see who you've become through the finished work of Christ. It will transform your life if you receive it by faith. You have to start where Jesus finished if you're ever going to run well. We've been caught trying to accomplish what he already did. And the only reason we've done that is because we really do care. And the gospel's touched us at a level. And the trouble is then we judge our own tree by our own fruit or lack thereof. And then our identity gets hindered. And then our ability to produce good things is hindered because we don't see our they or fit. Isn't it amazing how Jesus says a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. Therefore, you know, a tree by its fruit. And we hear that and all we hear is fruit, introspect our lives and judge ourselves. And the whole time he's not even talking about fruit. He's talking about the tree. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how we've been conditioned to be beat up, condemned, guilty and ashamed? On one hand, I'm just glad you have the potential to be those things. Those things are never the answer. But if we couldn't be those ways or potentially be those ways, it means we are pretty dead inside and nonchalant. So we can work with that. We can make it a good thing. I told Pastor Steve today, I said, think about it. If somebody's condemned, it's never God and it's not fruitful and it's not a good thing. So don't let it happen. But the fact that somebody can be condemned means they're alive inside. So we just got to need to teach people who they are. Amen. I don't we don't know who we are apart from him. We're trying to find ourselves through life and he's life. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah, I feel real. I just feel real. I don't know what I feel right now. I feel real sober, but passionate, but real humbled in my heart. I feel on the verge of tears for some reason. Listen, guys, if we don't see God's first love, if there's mystery wrapped around it and you have this slight question, well, how can he possibly love me? See, the reason you ask that question is because you weigh your value based on the life you know that you've lived. You know you better than anyone knows you. And that tends to judge people because you're very aware of weaknesses. Like he says stuff like, a good tree can't bear bad fruit. And the first thing we do is inspect our fruit and decide if we're a good tree. And if we find something that doesn't look good, then we're not a good tree. But then he says, a bad tree can't bear good fruit. And you go, wait a minute. Not everything on my tree is a throwaway. There's some good things in my life. Now I'm confused. I can't be a good tree because there's a bad apple. But I can't be a bad tree because there's a good apple. What's he talking about? See, because we're hearing fruit. 
And he's not even talking about fruit. He's talking about the tree. He says, make a tree good. And his fruit will be good. He says, therefore, you'll know a tree by its fruit. He says, a good tree can't bear bad fruit. Bad tree can't bear good fruit. Therefore, you know a tree by its fruit. What's, the, what's he talking about the whole time? The tree. We're hearing fruit and becoming fruit inspectors. We're thinking about people in the room going, I hope they're looking at their branches. <laughs> hope they're listening to pastor right now. <laughs> the whole time he's talking, he's not even talking about the fruit. He's talking about the tree. What's he saying? He's saying, you got to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, it'll be evident in the expression of your life. The tree is your identity. It's who you've become. If you make a tree good, if you teach someone who they are, they don't have to try to bear good fruit. They'll produce what they believe. They'll produce what... They, if I wake up and I know I'm a son and I know I'm loved by God and I'm not trying to pass or not trying to not fail because I'm already accepted in the beloved. I'm not laboring to be something he already accomplished. I'm waking up in him. I'm his boy. He loves me. He's pleased to call me brethren, not ashamed. He looks at me as if I've never sinned. It's so scriptural. You're justified through Christ, just as if you've never sinned. He's cleansed you of all unrighteousness. So what remains? Righteousness. He loves me through his son. He has restored me back to original value and placed me in the garden of his paradise and delight where he says, I bless you. I'm pleased with you. I love you, boy. If I wake up in that place and walk in what he says I am through his son, it's going to absolutely work something amazing in me and receive grace and my fruit's going to be automatically good because I'm a tree of righteousness. I'm not trying to be good. I'm his. He loves me. If I present my members, Romans 6, to righteousness, it'll produce its own fruit. Because here's the deal. If you make a tree good, Make a tree good, fruit's a guarantee. If you think the tree is identified by your actions, then the tree's never rightly identified and your actions are always the fruit. But if you think the tree's identified by his actions, now you made the tree good. And guess what the fruit follows? It's good. I've watched pure people let themselves get shipwrecked because their heart felt like they loved Jesus so much, but they believed they weren't living up to their love for him. So they constantly felt like they were failing and they identified with failure instead of being a son or a daughter. So they had no ability to make the tree good because they were constantly assessing the tree by the fruit. So they were trying to change the fruit to prove the tree. You have to make the tree good. You have to see the tree for what it really is. Does an apple tree produce an apple to prove to you it's an apple tree, or does it produce an apple because it is an apple tree? Watch. It was an apple tree in the seed. Come on. Yes. Isn't that sweet? That's so simple. This is not heavy. This is not deep, but it is profound. It's simple stuff. See, Jesus says, a good tree can't bear bad. A bad tree can't bear. Therefore, you know a tree by its... What's he talking about? Tree or fruit? What do we hear all the time, it seems? What's he talking about? What do we tend to hear? Oh, isn't that good? He, now watch this. He says, make a tree good, and its fruit's good, or make a tree bad, and its fruit's bad. Is he talking about you judging and assessing your tree, or is he talking about you getting healthy identity and realizing who you've become? Come on. <laughs> this little analogy of the tree has nothing to do with you becoming a fruit assessor. It has to do with you saying, man, if I got bad fruit hanging on me, I don't realize who I am. 
And my hope isn't trying to change my fruit. My hope's not trying harder. My hope's not, you know, I shouldn't really get so angry. I shouldn't snap like that. I, you know, I have such a short fruit. I am this type of personality. You know, I probably should. God, I need to change that. How are you going to change that? Yeah. You know, the best the world can do is call it anger management. It's still there. Just manage it. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible's answer is put it off. Oh, that's a good thing. We just grow. He said, do you know why you live the way you do? I answered, just like you would have. I said, because you're amazing and your grace is sufficient. And I am what I am by your grace. God, you've been merciful. You've been good. Who knows that's the right answer? I heard the Lord chuckle and he said, well, that's not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> and I said, that's the only answer. And I was receiving the voice of God. <laughs> I knew it was the voice of God because the atmosphere was overwhelming, but it just confused me because I thought that doesn't sound right, God. There is only one answer. It's you. It's your grace. Isn't that true? But he taught me something that night. He told me that grace has to have somewhere to land. That even though he's all the things I just proclaimed him, it has to have a landing place in my life or I'll never experience the truth of it. I can worship him for it, but I'll never eat the fruit thereof. Here's why he told me I live the way I do. You're going to love this. He said, Dan, on the night you got saved in 1995, you were sin conscious for a moment in time and saw your need for me. But ever since that moment, Dan, you've been a son in your heart. He said, that's why you live the way you do. Because you believe you're mine and that I see you as a son, period. He said, do you know why you live the way you do? Yeah, because you're amazing. No, because the day you got saved, you were only sin conscious for a moment and ever since that day, you've been in a son in your heart and then all the things you've just proclaimed me to be have a place to be real in your life. So yes, he is all those things. But if I don't see myself through righteousness as a son, there's no place for that grace to avail. What good does it do to sing he's merciful if you don't receive his mercy? What good does it do to sing his love all night and not receive his love and bear the fruit of it? Theologically, when I say God loves you, I am always right. But there's a big difference between me saying God loves you and you being loved by God. A big difference. Just saying God loves you won't change your life. Being loved by God is the transformation. You have to see and believe you're a son or daughter if you're going to walk in the strength of righteousness. But yet the price was paid for you to be righteous. And God sees you through the blood. But you have to see you through the blood to wear the benefit of what He accomplished. See, because God asked me a long time ago, He said, do you know why you live the way you do? And what He meant was the consistency. I wake up the same every day. I don't even have to try. I don't try, hard. I don't try to be a Christian. I don't try to be encouraged. I don't try not to sin. I wake up and I'm just free and ready to live. Amen. And he said, do you know why you live the way you do? And I answered like you would have. I said, because you're amazing, God. Because you're all merciful and your grace is sufficient for me. And it's like I heard him chuckle and he said, well, that's not the answer I'm looking for. I'm like, Lord, that's the only answer. He said, no, Dan, the reason you live the way you do is because when you were born again, you were sin conscious for a moment in time and recognized your need for me. But ever since that moment, you've been a son in your heart. And now everything you just said I am can land on your life. Did you get that? So everything I worship God in is true, but the benefit of those things aren't real in my life unless I see who I've become through Him. Does this make sense? And we're going to drag around and sell out our identity and then live up to what we think we are, which is low. That's deception. That's why this identity thing is so huge and that's why we've camped on it for two weeks. Because all of a sudden you live what you think you are. You give yourself to the value you possess. And your identity and esteem dictates the fruit that hangs on your tree. You can... When people don't know who they are, they live up to their low value. <coughs> You give yourself to what you believe you're worth. Come on. And you think and believe you're worth the blood of Jesus, man, it shuts a lot of doors, turns off a lot of voices, and the things you were drawn by before, you don't even hear anymore. Yeah. You're not struggling to be clean. You've been made clean. Yeah. In love. And I have a relationship with Almighty God because He wants it. Because He created me for it, and He chose to pay the price to move back in and live inside of me. He wants to live here. Because he knows what he created me to be. I just didn't know.
So I lived the way I lived and did the things I did because I didn't know. So I lived up to the low value that I had for my life. The low esteem. Most addictive behaviors are attached to low esteem, low identity. You live up to the low value that you see yourself. You live up to what you think you're worth. When a man understands he's worth the blood and the death of Jesus Christ so that he can live, it changes the way he thinks and what he gives himself to. Because he knows what he created me to be. I just didn't know. So I lived the way I lived and did the things I did because I didn't know. So I lived up to the low value that I had for my life. The low esteem. Most addictive behaviors are attached to low esteem, low identity. You live up to the low value that you see yourself. You live up to what you think you're worth. When a man understands he's worth the blood and the death of Jesus Christ so that he can live, it changes the way he thinks and what he gives himself to. We put on y mira quién ponemos. the new man. Y revestido del nuevo. Who is this new man? ¿Quién es este nuevo hombre? Who is renewed in knowledge el cual conforme a la imagen del que according creó, to the image se va renovando of him who created him. Hasta el conocimiento pleno. Do you see what Jesus is all about? ¿Ves lo que quiso hacer Jesús? He's all about restoring you back to the image. Quiere que restaurar tu imagen. He's not about taking you to heaven someday no on a bus. No simplemente llevarte al cielo. He's restoring you back to the Está image. A... But, but I'll tell you what, there's something about truth. And there's something about understanding what truth is, continuing in it, and the truth making you free. Now I'm telling you from the time we were born, we were homeschooled in the wrong home. We were trained by a lie. We were trained by the wisdom of the world. We were taught by our flesh. Be real with me, this is stuff we don't think about sometimes. We just pray a prayer to go to heaven and then start praying for blessings and provision. Make sure we get hooked up and stay faithful in the church. But I'll tell you what, I was trained by a lie my whole life. I was taught to think the way I thought, to feel the way I felt, to act the way I acted, to respond the way I responded to things. And it wasn't from the Lord. It was by sheer instinct. It was through the fall of man. It was the wisdom of the world. See, every man, when Adam sinned, Adam fell from the image of God and fell from the person of God. He fell from intimacy and relationship. The Bible calls it the day he died. From that day, the image of God in man was lost, and the command of God and everything that God made man to be was lost where man was concerned. And every man, Romans 5 teaches, from that day was born into Adam. And the Bible says you must be born again. Now somehow we've turned that into a prayer to go to heaven. No, it's a putting off the old and a putting on the new. It's everything transformed. It's getting back to the beginning. The word redemption means brought back to original value, bought back to original value. That means God restoring you before that fall, restoring you before sin, restoring a place of innocence, a place of wisdom, a place of love, a place of His heart, a place of peacemaking, of mercy, of selflessness. A place that man was before he separated himself from God through sin. Come on, if Jesus is the Lamb of God and John the Baptist said He takes away the sin of the world and it's taken away, now what? I guess my fight isn't there anymore. <laughs> Man, that's good news to me. <laughs> you can laugh now, ladies. It's okay. <laughs> it's good news. Come on. Behold, the Lamb of God who, He didn't smooth it over, He didn't cover it over, He took it away. He who knew no sin was made to be sin. We have to understand that God didn't just curse His Son on the cross, He made His Son to be what was cursing us. He made His Son to be sin. You say, yeah, but He became a curse, so we received the blessing. He was made to be sin. The Bible's clear. He bore our sin in His body on a tree that we, having died to sin, that means its nature, its sting, its stain, its tendency, we died to it. We say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I wasn't created for this. I wasn't made for this. This is not my lot in life, and I'm done believing that lie. He became what I was so I can be empowered to become what He is, a son. Come on, that's the gospel.